is this unwillingness for some of the family to accept other members of the family or to communicate with other members of the family or to make amends with other members of the family. I have somebody in my life who is fundamentally loyal to me, who sees me as the head of the family. I'm saying to you that you and I get that if you're loyal to me. I just can't believe what he's saying. I'm not telling Janelle to be more like Robin. I'm telling Janelle just to be loyal. Like just this major injustice that is being done to me and it galls me. Ironically, Janelle did sign up for Patreon. When her and I made an agreement that she would come into the family, she agreed wholeheartedly she would run her will into mine because I had to be the head of the family. And she made... Hi friends, it's Katie from Without a Crystal Ball. Well, welcome back to my channel. It's Friday, April 12th, 2024. I hope everyone's having a wonderful day. Yesterday I uploaded a video about an article shared by the US Sun, which was shared and talked about by numerous creators, multiple outlets, tons of media. And for some reason in my video, when I commented about Janelle Brown getting blamed in my comments, somehow that was transposed to me blaming her. And let's be clear, Janelle Brown holds no blame in what happened to her son. There is no blame for a woman, and I'm gonna tell you why there is no blame for this woman, just so we can be abundantly clear. Janelle Brown, was a woman that grew up in the Latter-day Saints mainstream church. She grew up as a mainstream Mormon. Janelle Brown, while she was a very young adult, was groomed by a family that was part of the Apostolic United Brethren. Janelle writes about how she met Mary Brown's family in the book, Becoming Sister Wives. In the book, you learn that she grew up with her mother and her father died when she was very young. She grew up in the mainstream church and because she lacked stability when it came to a father figure and she didn't have a large family, she always had this like family gap where she didn't have a huge family connection. When she met Mary's brother, Adam, she was welcomed into this enormous family that had large family gatherings where she felt a sense of community and connection. And she loved that feeling. Janelle Brown did not join a cult. She joined a group of people who made her feel welcome. But that group of people were interested in converting her because they needed women. They needed women because there's never enough women in a polygamist cult. Janelle was systematically indoctrinated by this family through their church, through these gatherings, and then she became a believer. It wasn't a hard conversion for her, though, because the AUB's beliefs are very similar to the mainstream church. There are a few differences, but because the fundamentalists follow what the church did very like the, the fundamentalists follow the doctrine of the original church. The mainstream cut off a lot of the beliefs of Joseph Smith and some of the beliefs of Brigham Young as the church has grown. In regards to how this happened, she was systematically, she found friends, she found community, she found people that she loved and she enjoyed being with other people. She also found a man that she was interested in, in Cody Brown. Through their marriage, Janelle lost her family. When Janelle and Cody got married, there was a lot of issues with her joining fundamentalism. But also, when she married Cody, she had never spent any time alone with him. She even wrote about that in the book. She wrote, except for that brief car ride during which Cody proposed and until our honeymoon, the only time we had been alone was when we went out to receive something from the cow pen on the ranch. Although I was looking forward to finally having freedom to be alone together, 
it was awkward at first. We had, our courtship had been chased. We had only shared one kiss and it was a very innocent one. Janelle admitted that she wasn't in love with Cody when she married him. She wrote, I know now that Cody and I weren't in love then, but there wasn't a moment that I didn't believe I'd made the right decision. Not just about Cody, but about my new faith. Janelle was in love with the faith, I think more so than the man. And I think she was willing to accept Cody because it gave her access into faith and the community that she was craving. That's my opinion based on what she's written. But she also writes about the alienation. When I announced my intention to convert from LDS to fundamentalism, I was challenged by many members of my family. They believed I was not just making a mistake, but committing a sin. Nevertheless, I never once wavered in my decision to accept the beliefs of my new religion. My, in marrying Cody, I alienated my maternal grandparents and my paternal grandmother. My sister, too, initially rebuffed me. Although it was hard for me to come to terms with my estrangement from certain members of my family, I imagined that I'd have sister wives who would at least, in part, compensate for that loss. I'm sure this was all on my mind during my honeymoon, and so I felt pressure for my marriage to succeed right from the start. She lost so much by marrying him that she stayed with him because she felt like she lost so much. Like she put pressure on herself because she believed that by marrying him, she could replace what she had lost. And she was raised by her, mater by her grandparents with help, obviously with her mom, but because her father died, her p grandparents were a huge part of her f life and a huge part of her faith. And losing that is a huge loss. And you can't replace what you lost with someone else. The loss will always be there. She became isolated from her previous life. Many of her friends and family cut her off because they believed that she was joining a cult. She lost community connections to the outside world. And her entire life was sort of engulfed around other people within this culture which in many ways made her more devout. And her mom followed her into this world by marrying Wynne Brown. So she and her mother went into this world, but they lost a lot of people in their lives by making that choice. She wrote about that in the book, Becoming Sister Wives. She and her mom, in many ways, were preyed on because they needed their bodies. They needed, via they needed women. They, there's never enough women in a cult where men need at least three women to achieve the celestial kingdom. Also need to dilute the bloodstream because there's a lot of intermarrying that happens in these cultures because they are so closed. Cousins marrying cousins. In some of the groups, you have half siblings marrying each other. Some of the groups, you have uncles marrying their nieces, aunts marrying their nephews, you see a lot of intermarrying, which creates genetic defects in children that, that are fatal. So these groups have to find women outside of the group. To this day, I've been told that the AUB is continuously finding new women, but now they're finding them in Mexico. There's a colony in Mexico. They convert Mexican women, and some of these men... I was told, are allegedly bringing these women across into the United States. They're not documented, and they're bringing them as plural wives. This is an ongoing problem. The FLDS was doing this as well in Canada, where they were trafficking minor children from Canada, from a group in Canada, down into Utah. Women are being bartered and traded because they need blood. They need fresh blood so that the, the cult doesn't end up killing itself through, not, through these genetic fatal anomalies. That is the reality. It's a hard reality to understand because of what you've seen on the show. But because of that reality, she will never be to blame. She will not be to blame for being a part of the show. I won't even blame her for having to continue filming because of the contract she's in uh, and the loyalty that she has to her faith still. I will not blame her for anything that happened with Garrison. In fact, I have a lot of empathy for these women, a lot of empathy. They are so 
indoctrinated that they have been defending a practice that has stripped their rights as women, that has stripped their equality, that has subjugated them, that has made them in an inferior role because they believed that they were doing what was right for their faith. They believed that doing this was going to get them to the next level in heaven. And then put yourself in Janelle's shoes where she had to give up her whole life and had all of this isolation and alienation because she committed to this faith. Imagine having to admit to yourself 30 years later that your family members were right about what you were getting involved in. Imagine the shame you would feel by having to leave that. And then imagine if you do leave that, you've lost family members by this point. Her grandparents have long passed away and she only has her children left and Christine's kids. And now Christine has gone on and married someone new further dividing the family because as much as they are going to say they're one family, they're the family as it, as it exists today cannot be the one, the way it once was. It will never be that way again. They can get together again. They can reunite. They can do family reunions, but she and Christine will likely not live in the same place again because she's planning on living near Maddie with her daughter in North Carolina has a lot at stake to say that what she did was wrong and that her identity has become wrapped up in this. And if she were to leave, she loses that identity. So I have empathy for her because in all of this, she's been victimized. The people that indoctrinated her, the men that have exploited her that are to blame for what's happened to her. And it's Cody that has kept her unstable through constantly moving around the country moving every so many years, further isolating her in states where she's further away from family and friends. The Flagstaff move by Cody, I think is by far the most despicable because he moved the family to a state where there were no other family members. He isolated them further from their family members. He moved them eight or nine hours away from their where, they're lo- where they grew up. Janelle grew up in Salt Lake. She grew up in Utah, have family there anymore. Her mom was in Wyoming, but she's isolated. She's been isolated in Flagstaff. And now with Garrison's passing, people are coming at her for wanting to be with her daughter in North Carolina. Why would you want her to remain isolated in Flagstaff when she can be with her daughter and her husband and her grandkids in North Carolina, where she can actually not be isolated. You shouldn't blame her. You shouldn't blame her for going to Arkansas and doing a planned trip she had planned prior to this happening to see the eclipse with her son, Logan, and his wife, Michelle. You shouldn't blame her for sharing photographs, for for smiling, Janelle Brown is the biological mother, and as far as I know, was the one that was the most concerned about Garrison the night that he passed away. She was the one that was frantically trying to find someone to go to his house. She was the one that was worried about him, that checked in with him. She is not to blame for what happened that night. She was the one that was constantly trying to help him, to remind him that he was loved, to remind him that she loved him to remind him that he had all these things to look forward to in his life, to be there for him. She blamed herself to the police. And I stated weeks ago that she shouldn't have. It's not her fault. She told police, I should have done more. I should have gotten him help. That's hindsight. Should have, would have, could have. Janelle is not to blame. And anyone misconstruing my video stating the reasons how indoctrination works, how the culture systematically subjugates women and controls them, grooms them and traffics them, how the fear, the paranoia, and the indoctrination creates a sense of nobody wants to talk with law enforcement is construed to me blaming her. I can't help you because nowhere in my recent videos did I blame Janelle. Do I think it's healthy to continue filming? I don't. Do I think that this will help the family to air this out publicly? I don't. Do I think that Janelle will get blamed by Cody? I do. Do I think that could cause more pain to Janelle? I do. Do I believe that Janelle should 
if she can find a way out of this contract with TLC? I do. But I can't underestimate the amount of money she's getting paid by this network. When you come from relative poverty to having internet and like media fame through a reality show and are living a lifestyle that is well beyond what you ever would have achieved without a show, it is hard to give that up. And now for the very first time, she's getting paid. She wasn't being paid for years and Cody was exploiting her. So how do you tell a woman who was never getting paid, who's finally getting paid and making a decent living to not want to continue that? It's like a double-edged sword. And that's the danger of these reality shows because they offer you so much freedom financially, but you have to sacrifice so much of your private life and your privacy. I have empathy for this woman. She is being exploited by a network and may not even recognize it. She has been exploited by Cody and she did wake up to that and has recognized that. And every single day that she spends away from Cody and away from this cult with other members outside of it is more time where she can reacclimate into this real world and maybe return to the Janelle she was before meeting members of the Apostolic United Brethren. The Apostolic United Brethren is a dangerous cult that confuses members of the LDS church and gets them to join their group. And they do it under coercive and manipulative tactics. And then she ended up with a malignant narcissist who has manipulated her and financially abused her for over 30 years. Janelle Brown still has to play nice with Cody because he still has his name on property that she jointly owns with him. She still has to play nice with Cody because Cody has the ability to take away any of the money that she put into Coyote Pass. She still has to play nice with him because she, Cody owes her hundreds of thousands of dollars for the money that he used to buy the home he has with Robin. She also cannot disparage him because of contracts with the show. Janelle Brown is not to blame. And anyone saying that I'm blaming her, I don't know what to tell you. They've misheard me. They've, they're acting on emotion, but I'm not blaming her. I have empathy for her. A lot of it. I don't have a lot of empathy for Cody. I don't have empathy for the people that are coercing women and trafficking them into these cults and taking and stealing their lives from them. I don't have empathy for people abusing children and abusing women but I do have empathy for the women who are victims as much as the children being victims. And I say this coming from a place where I've interviewed dozens of women that were plural wives, that have lived in polygamy, that have come out of this and expressed and shared their experiences of the shame they felt of not being a good parent while they were inside the cult and the shame they feel about the life that they lived because they still, many of these women that leave still feel a sense of guilt and responsibility as though even amid their victimization that they in a way have Stockholm syndrome and love their abusers and want approval from their abusers. It's not as simple as saying that I hate these women or I hate this family. I would love this family to come out of this and to be free from this and to for each one of the women to have financial independence away from their abuser, to find resources and support networks to help them deconstruct. I'm not a therapist. I can only share with you what other polygamist women that have left have told me, that therapy helps, that they have been able to find networks with other survivors of these groups, that finding and reuniting with your family that you might have been alienated from helps, that finding services to help you with reacclimating society like through holding out help, cherished families, or any other polygamist groups like Hope After Polygamy that help victims reestablish themselves, gain a self of self-independence, self-esteem. That's what I hope for every member of this family. And I hope that at some point the men responsible in these cults are held responsible, including Cody Brown. And I'm not going to stop talking about the tragedies that happen in polygamy because a tragedy happened. 
while I was reporting on the story. I did not start reporting on this family because of Garrison Brown passing away. I've been covering them for five years. I have been interviewing people from this cult and from and apostates and helping apostates have a voice for five years. And I'm not going to stop helping spread the word about the dangers of polygamy because a tragedy happened when I was reporting on polygamy. This is a horrible event that happened. And it's unfortunately something that happens a lot in this culture. And it's unfortunately not something that anyone can easily understand, not even the family. And I'll never blame a victim like Janelle. I'll never blame a victim like Christine. I'll never blame a victim even like Mary. Hell, I can't even blame Robin in a lot of ways because Robin is also a victim of the same system. I don't like Robin's behavior because of the system, but I don't know if Robin, I think Robin might be a different person outside of that system. I think all of these women would be different outside of the system and we shouldn't be blaming any of them. We shouldn't be criticizing how they're managing their grief. My only hope is that at some point they can free themselves from Cody. That's what I would desperately crave for them, but I can't control them. I just know from other people that have left that have found freedom that it is so much better on the other side. But taking the step to leave is so scary for so many people, especially the women. All right, you guys, be kind to pe people. Be nice to them. I hope this clarifies that I'm not blaming her. I hope you understand where I'm coming from. And make sure to leave some comments if you have something to say. Make sure to give this video a thumbs up. Subscribe to my channel if you haven't subscribed. Thank you so much for watching. Bye, guys.